Y254 Imagine And we are back. Thank you for staying with us. And, uh, you know, being a Tuesday, as I had said, we want to talk about entrepreneurship. And uh, today we're exploring investment between Kenya and diaspora businesses. A very interesting topic, especially if you've been thinking of, you know, investing. Uh, you know, if you're in the diaspora, if you know someone in the diaspora who's been thinking of investing in Kenya or even vice versa. Uh, for this particular topic, we have been joined by an expert. Uh, she is Mary Muturi. As the CEO of Jambalist. Kaimu sana wada Mary. Thank you, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Thank you for having me this morning. Yeah. Yes, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that I'm here. Yeah. That we can explore this topic. Definitely. About businesses. Yeah. We're glad to have you. Thank so you. Um, before we delve into the topic, maybe you can give us your background because you have been in the diaspora for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, even that forms... Uh, the basics so the foundation of how you formed your company Jambalist mm -hmm. and uh, why you're the expert to give us this uh, <laughs> this uh, some of this advice so mm -hmm. yeah give us tell us about your experience uh, thank you so much uh, as uh, you have said my name is Mary Moturi I'm the chief executive of Jambalist uh, mm -hmm. limited and uh, this is a company that is founded uh, or was founded by three ladies mm -hmm. um, but two of uh, the partners are in the US and myself I'm here okay. uh, but it just didn't get done uh, before we started or I joined Jambolis before we founded Jambolis I used to work with the United Nations mm -hmm. I worked there for more than 27 years and I retired in uh, 2019 Okay. And I somehow I find myself back home. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, so we founded this uh, company three years ago, actually during the COVID time, and mm -hmm. it was more uh, to be able to meet the demands of the Kenyans diaspora in the diaspora at that time. Okay. Uh, having lived in the U.S. for more than thirty years, um, we. And also my partners have also lived there for a long time. Wow. And therefore, you know, most of the people, friends, you know, people at the UN or the ones that I used to work with, they would gravitate towards us to find out about information. You know, I would get calls. Though I was not working for the Kenya mission, <laughs> you can't imagine how many people used to call me to find out how can I get a passport, how can I get, you know, visas, okay. or, you know, all those things. And uh, because of out of, and then it's like, the Kenyan community started growing in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, with the population uh, and people having families, then you know you start all those normal lives mm -hmm. where now you have got Kenyans who have got families who have got children and you start the ask again asking where can we get a good apartment where can we get a house or where can I get somebody who wants who can breed my children yeah. or I've got something happening over the weekend uh, do you know somebody who does this or that catering or the, and therefore we started uh, an online platform where all these people are asking us questions and we keep on telling them, they can all start putting that information on an online platform. Mm -hmm. Where instead of us having to tell them the information, it's like, okay, we gear them to our website and tell them, why don't you just go to jambolis.com mm -hmm. and there you'll be able to f look for what you want if it's a Kenyan church, a plumber who can be able to help you with their plumbing issues, uh, catering, and also, um, the people who have got businesses, we also told them, go to the jambolis.com, register your online, your business there. It is free of charge. We don't charge people listing their businesses oh, there. Okay. So that's how uh, Jambolis uh, started. And therefore, we gravitated and became an advertising and marketing company. Mm -hmm. And uh, through the marketing, we were able to have a virtual expo in uh, 
-hmm. which was very successful. We had companies which were actually from here and also companies from the diaspora. Okay. We opened, we did it through Zoom because that was what was there during that time. During COVID, yeah. During COVID, you know, everything was Zoom. Mm -hmm. uh, as Jambolists, we find we held parties, we held baby showers, we held um, Matanga, everything <laughs> virtually. Yeah, and it, it was really very, su it worked. <laughs> it was Good. very successful before. <laughs> we didn't know how it was going to be, whether mm -hmm. it was going to be successful. But with this, you know, uh, these three ladies were yeah. able to pull out this um services for the community for free uh -huh. and uh but now when it came to jambolis now there are people who want to advertise on our platform then we decided okay we can do this for business uh -huh. <laughs> so that's how jambolis was born mm -hmm. and uh we have invited uh people to come and uh, join us uh last year we had our first physical expo Mm -hmm. And again, it's because of the demand. The people who joined us for our virtual, they wanted to be able to do it physically. Physically, you need to come with our products and... Yes, which they want to bring there. their own merchandise there. They want to come and uh, showcase what they do. They want to be able to explain to the people. And of course, it's easier to sell when you are talking one-on-one -on -one one -on -one, yeah. other than on the phone. Mm -hmm. The other reason why Jambolis was actually formed is we have been swindled. And some, those are some of the challenges that you find in the diaspora. Yeah. A lot of people who had gone there during my time, a lot of them uh, were not able to travel back to Kenya frequently and regularly. Mm -hmm. So you found that, uh, okay, they have got money, they have been working. They want to invest here. They want to build a house, mm -hmm. even for themselves. Uh, they would trust that money to their parents, to their relatives, to companies. But eventually, when they were able to come here, they find nothing has been done, mm -hmm. and they have already sent too much money. So, and of course, you know, these are the things that Jambolist wanted to make sure that uh, I, being in Kenya, I'm the one who is on the ground. I can be able to go and ascertain whether that business is true, uh -huh. whether this company really exists. That's true. So let me let me ask, mm -hmm. uh, just to interject a bit. So if there's someone in diaspora mm -hmm. and the interest is to build a house in mm -hmm. Kenya, mm -hmm. so how do you how do you come in? How do you confirm? Is it through you that they build the house or through whoever they choose? But now you are the one to just make sure that it's happening. Uh, what we have done is that we have partnered with uh, business people, business companies mm -hmm. in Kenya, mm -hmm. where we have already done our due diligence that this is a good company. This is a, a company that exists. It has been in existence for a long time. Uh -huh. The directors are re legit. And therefore, we bring these business people with the diaspora who want to invest, and they invest through them. Mm -hmm. So we have got very many people who want to work with us. We have got contractors who is like, okay, I'm here. I would want, you know, if you have got people who want to build, you can uh, introduce them to us. So what we do, we introduce these mm -hmm. businesses to the diaspora people. Okay. Yes. All right, that mm. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because we have had a lot of stories, you know, you've been sending money, then when you come, what you actually requested for, what you're seeing, mm. you know, it's not even barely a shadow of what you <laughs> wanted. Or, you know, in some cases together, nothing has been done completely. They're actually sending you pictures of someone's house that is being built. A neighbor's. <laughs> a neighbor's <laughs> house. Which is, you know, it's very devastating yes. because I understand the people in diaspora, you know, they really um, work for their money. You know, they do. People they really do. work. They work 20, almost like 24, 24 hours. You, you know, know? It's a, yeah. yeah, you have doubles. But because they have got goals mm -hmm. at, and they have got this in mind, and they also want their families to uplift their families. Mm -hmm. You know, that is the other thing that uh, the diaspora people do. They just don't work for themselves. And you find that they get devastated when they have really been helping their relatives, their siblings to come up and they take advantage of them. Mm -hmm. Because, and that's again why we want Jambolist to be there, to educate our friends in the diaspora. Don't always just send your money to people. Mm. Because 
retirement and old age comes very fast before you know it. Yeah. <laughs> it catches <laughs> so up really fast. So it catches up very fast. <laughs> so with Jumbo List, uh, we are here to tell, uh, also try to invest. And that is also what the, the, uh, the Department of the Fort Diaspora mm -hmm. is doing. You know, uh, again, remittances and the money coming to, the, to Kenya from the diaspora, not only from the U.S., but from all over the world where Kenyans are, mm -hmm. has been helping and building this country. Mm -hmm. But we want it, you know, just don't send money for people to live on and all that. Also, think about yourself. Think about your old age. Because sometimes it's very difficult to really invest as a Kenyan in the diaspora for something that you can say, okay, I can live on this. Mm -hmm. But it's easy to invest in this country because you know your country better. Yeah, true. And um, they can be able to do uh, invest here in a way that they'll have a comfortable retirement. Okay. And that's what we are, you know, as Jambolists, we are always selling to our diaspora friends. You know, we are based in the U.S. We are also, we have got uh, linkages with Mexico. We have got linkages with Canada. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are also going to be, of course, expanding to other countries okay. in due time just to let people know Yes, you can, and it is safe to invest in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And you can have your return if you invest wisely. In Kenya, yes. okay, wow. Mm. I think that's wonderful, and uh, truly it helps with the economy, you yes. know, build our country. Mm. Yeah. As a Kenyan there, you're mm. still investing, you're helping yourself, and you're helping the country at the same time. Mm. So we have talked about investing in Kenya, mm. uh, you know, but, and we'll get to some some of the great investments options mm. that are there. Mm. What about uh, Kenyans investing in the diaspora? You know, mm. are there possibilities? Are there opportunities uh, for Kenyans who are uh, don't really plan on going to the diaspora but want to set up businesses there? Yes, it is possible. And thank God, you know, our government is trying very hard because you know the president, you know, has been talking about exporting and less importing. Mm -hmm. So um, it's how now to get the routes to be able to really uh, take our products out of Kenya. Uh, the government is working hard to do that. Uh, I know of a lady who has been um, selling macadamia mm -hmm. in the U.S. Okay. Uh, she was doing very well, but unfortunately because of COVID, it has slowed. But, you know, after COVID, things I hope will still, you know, mm -hmm. they are picking and she'll be able to go back to where she was. We have got now, at least you can go to uh, a, um, a shop or a supermarket in the U.S. and find a gin made in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So, um, so they are, they are Goa also, uh, and that is something that uh, I think Kenyans need to be taught and or to be told more about it because that is how the trade between the U.S. and Kenya uh, that Kenyans can take advantage of. We have not taken advantage of Agoa for the long that has been there. Mm -hmm. But and th that's for why those this that don't know Agoa, please mm -hmm. expand a little bit more. Yeah, uh, it's those the businesses uh, uh, between the U.S. and mm -hmm. Kenya. Mm -hmm. And we are glad that this year we have got the CS for um, investment, trade, and industry, who is our keynote speaker and who is our guest mm -hmm. for our expo this year. Okay. And we want him, her to come uh, and talk more of the opportunities that are there between Kenya and the U.S. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have also got a lot of, you know, there are people, we, I know there is a county of Kurunyaga also, you know, has been exporting coffee and they have, uh, they have been doing it for some time now. Mm -hmm. uh, I was speaking to a lady who is in artisan and uh, just the small time business people would want to be able to work with them in the future to see how they can be able to go and sell wow. their merchandise. Mm -hmm. Because right now we have been, uh, been talking to a lady and say, but you know, you have been working with big companies, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> as we are small companies, we cannot be able to compete mm -hmm. because their products are not like if you sell um, a mansion which is 17 million mm -hmm. and when you are going just to sell you know uh, necklaces clothes small those things. ones they are small things yeah. but yet they are very marketable in the u.s mm -hmm. so it's just how can we be able to package for them 
to uh -huh. be able to profit. So there's a lot of opportunities from here to Kenya, uh, to, to the, the US. US and to other countries, I believe. Yeah. But also is how the government is able to assist mm -hmm. the Kenyans, especially because we have got people who would want to invest in agriculture and uh, agricultural products are a bit sensitive. Yeah. So um, it's how can we be able to package them to be acceptable in the countries outside. Mm -hmm. I, I'm glad at least we have got a direct flight now to the US. And they can be able to, ha to shorten the time that they used to take when there will be a layover in another country yeah. before we can get to the U.S. Mm -hmm. So uh, Kenya was more or less limited to the European countries mm -hmm. when it came to agricultural products. Mm -hmm. But I believe in future we shall be able to also have, be able to market more of the agricultural products. There are, you know, um, there are people who in technology, of course, Kenya is high in technology. Sure. And that is something that... Um, in future also can be especially for the youth mm -hmm. because we'd like to bring the c the jobs which are which are in uh, philippines which are in india where they are th they have got the places where they can call and get the information you know we can wa would want to be able to have a call center in kenya uh -huh. instead of having you know these are things that are you know to be explored and mm -hmm. jumbo is exploring some of these things okay. what are the businesses that we can be able to say okay we can form a, a call center in kenya for a business in the u.s mm -hmm. and the, and you know and i know that the ict uh, department or the minister of ict is <laughs> also looking into that Okay. how they can be able to have you know such businesses so there are businesses that are the Kenyans, opportunities yeah. there are opportunities out there you don't even have to travel mm -hmm. it, we are in the age of digital marketing you know <laughs> so ah, technology mm. is helping yeah technology know. is helping yeah yes. ah, wonderful mm. because i know there's a lady i saw a story of a lady who mm. is selling chapatis something as small as chapatis mm -hmm. uh, I think it was in the U.S. Yes. And it was making good money out of it. You exactly. Know? Would you have thought that you can ship chapatis? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but thought? there's a lady who is actually in Maryland uh -huh. uh, who does who does the mandazis, the samosas, wow. the chapatis, and uh, she's shipping them in the whole of the United States. Look you at know, that. Wherever you are. <laughs> in fact, not even that. Mm -hmm. I saw somewhere a Kenyan in the U.S. Mm -hmm. say they can ship those the same products mm -hmm. to the u.s uh -huh. to the u.s yes you can if you do your chapatis here mm -hmm. and you freeze them yeah just like the way the people carry their own mm -hmm. you can still do it if you have got a market there yeah you freeze them and then mm -hmm. it gets done people enjoy and people <laughs> enjoy you know <laughs> yes so um that is exactly what uh we are trying to mm -hmm. really all these more small businesses and big businesses yeah. bringing them together mm -hmm. and you know and as i said this year we have got uh, the jambulis expo mm -hmm. which is going to be on the 24th 25th and 26th in new jersey mm -hmm. and it is the second one that we are having our, our keynote speaker cs uh, miano and um we the, we have had the president is also going to the <laughs> has yes. been has been is invited by the president of the United States mm -hmm. for a state dinner for a state visit. Okay, and we have extended an invitation actually to the president okay. if he can be able to also attend um, the expo mm -hmm. uh, after the dinner because I believe the dinner is on the twenty third. So it and falls during it that is admiration. falls during that time. <laughs> so I hope that the president can even hear <laughs> us and. <laughs> Yes, and be please. able to <laughs> to, <laughs> to come, come and grace uh, our because I'm sure he will bring a lot of um, mm -hmm. good information yeah. to the diaspora people. We uh, and it would be like a linkage between the diaspora conference 2023 that mm -hmm. was held here last year in December. Yeah, it can be an extension because so many people are left with questions. Mm -hmm. So so many people want to you know to interact with the government. Jumbo list is well versed and is well uh, placed to be able to bring government mm -hmm. 
and uh, the diaspora people together. So we have invited the president. We are hoping that uh, we can <laughs> receive uh, a confirmation soon hopefully. for the invitation <laughs> when he comes to the United States. Uh -huh. Hopefully, hopefully yes. he will come. Mm. That would be great. Yeah. So let me ask, um, speaking of the government, mm. has the government created um, an easy uh, business you know, I inv business investment for people in the diaspora here in Kenya, because um, some time ago people were saying, you know, when w the taxes at least were really going mm. high, people were saying that it's not creating a good business environment for Kenya for people to invest in Kenya. Mm. So, do you think this is do you think this is the case, or things are a bit different? Um, I lived in the United States mm -hmm. uh, for more than thirty years. Uh, I used to pay for my property taxes, mm. and uh, per year it could even it was around nine thousand okay. dollars. And uh, we, we we pay taxes in in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who is also in the U.S. Of course, you know I'll be beaten by people hearing this, but you know, uh, <laughs> and she was complaining that there's a lot of taxation yeah. in Tanzania. <laughs> so I think what it is is that uh, we only know about ourselves in Kenya and we possibly don't know much about the other countries, mm -hmm. how they are performing. So we f think that possibly it's just us Kenyans who are being taxed or who are paying these taxes. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, you find that different people have got different views and therefore we let people just, you know, have their views. But um, we also, g you know, the dollar has been going down. Not long time ago, it was 163. Yeah. Of course, the diaspora people were very happy when it was 163 <laughs> because they could invest very easily. Yeah. The, dollar w the dollar would multiply. Mm. But us in Kenya were hurting yeah. when it was too high. Today, I believe it is about 132 and it is still it's going down. Yeah. So, uh, again, you know, so I think there's something happening we don't know. Mm -hmm. You go to the supermarket, you know, a few things are, st going, ha are going down. Uh -huh. uh, we don't talk much about that. <laughs> 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 but okay. I believe, I, I think we are on the, ra you know, on the right track. Mm -hmm. But um, yes, there are things, uh, the government can, is doing a lot to be able to at least bring these uh, people to be able to invest easily. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that I find missing is sometimes the diaspora, the Kenyan diaspora don't have enough information of what to invest here in terms of the government. Housing, property, where the government is not involved, it's easy to do that. But I would want the CS, when she comes to the United uh, States, to be able to explain to the Kenyans what is it that you can be able to do here? What are the projects that a Kenyan in the diaspora or a group of Kenyans in the diaspora can be able to do? And tangible things. Mm -hmm. We have been told before you can, you know, the diaspora can come and engage in um, construction, in infrastructure. But you know how it is. Even mm -hmm. to get a tender to just for a small road, it's True. so difficult. Yeah. So if there would be a few things which are dedicated for the diaspora, and therefore it is only the diaspora people who will send tenders there. Okay. It's only the diaspora people who will be able to access this. Mm -hmm. Then that would help the diaspora people, okay. because then there will be a direct. So this is just for the diaspora, and therefore we don't have you know people saying uh, going behind the doors and whatever. Of course, Kenya is Kenya, but <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but Jay. at least yeah. would want the, you know for the for the Kenyan government to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the affordable housing has been talked about a lot. Yeah, uh, the president also mentioned about it during the conference, the diaspora conference 2023, mm -hmm. that uh, the diaspora people can also be able to invest in the da affordable housing, and they can be able to buy for themselves. They can be able to buy for their relatives. And what we'd want uh, to do as Jambolis is really to be able to be the connecting uh, factor between the government. Because you can get all this information on, mm -hmm. our, again, on our website. What we have tried to do as Jambolis is the things, the few things that um, affect the diaspora, we put it on our website. You can't imagine sometimes it's so difficult to get information. Uh, mm -hmm. I, 
people don't read a lot. People yeah. don't do research. They want to give a call, just call so and so to give you the information. Yeah. <laughs> I've been here since 2022. Mm -hmm. And I still receive calls from the U.S. How can I get this <laughs> <laughs> when I'm here? Like, and you yeah, know, which when things easy, you know. <laughs> it's easy. But of course, because again, people are used to that. Mm -hmm. But now we have been leading people to jambolis.com to go and get all this information. information. We want to be able to put uh, the linkages, linkages between the embass the embassy, the U.S. embassy, the Kenyan embassy in the U.S with Jambolis so that people can go there, can tell people, okay, you want your ID, you want your passport, you want, you know, okay, you don't know where to go. Go to Jambolis, you'll be able to get all these things. So mm. go to Jambolis.com. So yeah. we are building that to be able to meet the needs for mm -hmm. our Kenyan diaspora. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, uh, the, there are projects, I believe, that the Kenyans can be able to take advantage of okay but they do not know how they do not know where and that's why we have the CS for uh, for investment trade and industry coming to the US to give us more explanations and to be able to explain these things I'm sure she'll also be able to explain about taxes because mm -hmm. again there's a fear that the diaspora will be taxed twice yeah. In the U.S. and here. And over here, yeah. So that one again hinders the business. Mm -hmm. But I've, uh, I've talked to banks and they say, no, usually they don't, they, it, but they have to, have to have a form that they fill. Mm -hmm. But we need to have that confidence that there's they no double sure. taxation. Mm -hmm. Because then why it do... It would hurt your business. Exactly. Then it would make sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then of course, uh, we also want to be able, for those who cannot be able to travel... We want for them to have an easy way of transacting their businesses through banks. Because sometimes the banks ask for information that they cannot be able to have. They are there and they don't have. So it's a, there's a lot of working together with the government, with the people and all that. Yeah, and uh, we have to thank the Department for Diaspora because now they have started at least taking mobile services, consular services to different places, different cities. Mm -hmm. And because one of the things that was very uh, difficult to do is getting IDs when you are in the diaspora. That one the department has been able to cover through the mobile consular services. Also the, e the passports and also how to get uh, other birth certificates, other uh, documents offered by the government mm -hmm. that are required by the diaspora people. Okay. And, uh, you know, this, uh, this year, at least in the, in the U.S., mm -hmm. we have got in Massachusetts, they are going there. Uh, they are also going to Texas, and they are going to Washington. Uh -huh. Those are three states that, uh, you know, those who are in those states can take advantage and be able to go and get their services done. Okay. We have also gotten in touch with the ministry, with the department for diaspora, to see whether they can bring those services during the expo, so that those who are in New Jersey, those who are in Massachusetts, you know, Massachusetts, will not be able to have gotten their things done. They can get they it. Can that come, during they can come during the expo. During the expo, we have mm -hmm. had it before, and therefore I believe we can also be able to have, have those consular services. Uh -huh. in, in New Jersey during the expo. Okay. Yeah. I think that's that's mm. wonderful. <laughs> and uh, I was about to ask, you know, mm. the investment opportunities or mm. options mm. that you've said that the CS would be able to advise better, you know, mm. when yes. when she comes for the expo. Mm. So let me ask, now when those that are going to the expo mm. are from Kenya because the for those that have a market yes. or the ma target market is the people abroad. Mm -hmm. So how do they travel? Do you do they get in touch with you, with the journalist, to um, facilitate their travel there, to mm. maybe make it faster, <laughs> easier? <laughs> it can be a process, you know, just yes. to get a visa to mm. go to the U.S. Mm. Yeah. So, do uh, does your company help with that? Um, what we do is uh, we try to start our processes early mm -hmm. so that those who are interested in coming, because we have got no way of uh, doing with, with the 
the American Embassy in mm -hmm. the U in Kenya here. Okay. They have to apply. There is no shortcut, shortcut about seat. that. <laughs> <laughs> there are no shortcut. But uh, mm -hmm. also there are those who al already have visas who mm -hmm. can travel and they have got no, they are not inhabited by lack of visas. So okay. we do the processes early. Mm -hmm. We advertise early and tell the, those who are interested to please apply for their visas early enough so that they can have at least the interviews mm -hmm. before May, before the expo. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Mm -hmm. um, as we close up on this, what are some mm -hmm. of the challenges um, faced by uh, clients and even investors? Uh, yes, I mentioned those uh, challenges. First of all is um, mm -hmm. those who do not have documents to, to, to travel. Okay. And yeah. therefore, they have been swindled because they cannot be able to really to travel to go and ascertain that oh. what they are being told is it's true, true. Is, the, is the reaction. And when the, eventually when they get to, be, to come to the U.S., uh, to Kenya, they look for those companies and they don't have the offices anymore. The offices are closed. They have lost their money yeah. and, uh, you know, had earned money. You know, the other is, of course, are the challenges of not knowing what are the investments which are readily available for them mm -hmm. here. Yeah. And also, um, the people, you know, uh, how with the banks, how to work together with the banks for them to be able to finish their, you know, to, to finish their transactions and all that. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are happy that we have been able to partner with banks. Uh, last year we had D DTB who uh, came to the expo mm -hmm. and they were able to talk to the people. This year we are hoping that we'll have um, a few, uh, you know, a bank that will also come over and be able to uh, give the services of a bank. We have approached KBC, uh, K KCB. KCB, we mm -hmm. have approached um, Consolidated, we have approached Equity, and uh, we are just waiting to hear who will come on board so that they can be able to go and uh, to be there. But also we have got banks which have toured the U.S., you mm -hmm. know, before then. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's great. Mm. Uh, finally, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this being a youth channel, yeah. uh, some maybe s a, a young person is listening in and say, ah, this is probably not mine. You know, <laughs> it looks a bit big <laughs> and it might seem it's for a person at a certain caliber, you mm. know, uh, in status. So how do you advise young people to even tap into this, this opportunity that's there in the diaspora? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you can't believe it, but uh, we have got very many young people now who are interested in um, investing in Kenya. Uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, <coughs> for the youth in the U.S., for the young adults, who are coming up, you, you know, uh, our children who are there, who are born there, they are now in their 20s. Mm -hmm. We have got doctors, we have got lawyers. And what I would uh, want to advise them is not just to get close and think that there's nothing really in Kenya, but uh, is to be able to come and visit. Or their parents to bring, also to start bringing their children mm -hmm. early enough for them to start enjoying the country and showing yeah. them. Don't just take your children to the village <laughs> to say hello to the grandmother, to the, gran to the grandparents, but show them what other Kenyans are doing. Mm -hmm. I, I have a friend who came last year with the family. Uh, she has got um, a young girl, a young adult, and also a youth, uh, a teenager, mm -hmm. almost a young adult. And uh, they visited a lot of um, businesses around. And we have got a couple who lived in the U.S. in California. Mm -hmm. They are building a, a very big uh, building in the, um, on Riverside. They went and saw these are Kenyans uh, who are doing it. So they have to be shown that there are things that are happening. It's not just when they just go to the village, they are not, they see, oh, you know, it's like they are in an uncomfortable zone. Yeah. So they are not, but I tell you now, I've mm -hmm. got one of my partners, the son came here and he has said he doesn't want to go back, he wants to study here, he <laughs> wants to stay here. So there is a future in this country for the youth. Okay. When they come here, they see the transformation, they understand the culture. 
we have got a very open culture. You go, you, you are YouTube people. Yeah. You go to the YouTube and you see all the, <laughs> all the youth, especially those who visited from Nigeria, mm -hmm. from Ghana. They are YouTubers and they come here and they say how great Kenya is. Yeah. We just need to advertise Kenya better in a, better, in a positive way. And uh, Jambolis has also got an, uh, a youth, a young adult uh, branch called EPAD where we try to educate young adults of the things that they can find in Kenya, in colleges and all that, and also in the U.S. So we start train, showing them uh -huh. there are things that you can do in Kenya. Okay. Before we started the station, I mentioned about a young man who is a New Yorker who studied in New York. Yeah. And uh, he has traveled around Ke uh, Africa. He has gone to a few states. But now he's in Kenya because... He sees opportunities in Kenya. Yeah, in Kenya. So these are the people that would want to bring together as youth, to speak to the youth, to speak to the young adults, and be able to encourage them to come and invest in Kenya. Uh -huh. Because it's very uh, doable. Okay. Yes. We have, uh, we, we take our country for granted sometimes. <laughs> yes, we are, actually. <laughs> we do take I, our I think for we granted. also don't um, advertise it very much mm -hmm. in a positive way. Yeah. Like now, <laughs> funny enough, mm -hmm. uh, what a lot of the diaspora are talking is about the floods on the expressway <laughs> and uh, the waters, you know. Yeah, it's a legacy. <laughs> and, and, you know, that one happened one night. Yeah. Okay, we suffered that one night, yeah. I being one of them. <laughs> but yesterday, you're driving, everything is dry. Mm -hmm. Every business is, is back, back, you know, to normal. To normal. Yeah. Who went and said that? It, oh, you can drive through the express without a problem. Nobody. Mm -hmm. We never went back to say to that this yeah, one has been things collected. Have been collected. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we need to change <laughs> that a bit. Yes, yeah. and since we are in the youth, mm -hmm. you know, uh, definitely, you know, Jambolis would uh, be able to link up with you and bring you some of the youth. Maybe you can talk to them off and then uh -huh. see what can you be able to do with them. What is it that can be able to sell? Exactly. Yes. We can definitely, that can definitely happen because mm -hmm. we're all about the youth and, yes. uh, you know, empowering ourselves and, you mm -hmm. know, doing all that. Yes. All right. So how, well, how can people get you, um, your, your website or maybe social media platforms mm -hmm. if they want to reach out? This Eesh. is your camera. <laughs> yes. Uh, again, we are actually present in all... Uh, all media platforms. We are on Facebook as jambolis.com. We are on X. We are on uh, TikTok. We are on Instagram. And also, we are on jambolis.com. And we are, have also got jambolisexpo.com for the expo that is going to take place uh, in May 24, 25, 26. It's a memorial weekend. It's the beginning of summer. That's when everybody is now to just remove their jackets and have a good mm -hmm. time. The swimming pools are open that time. Uh, we are also going to have a barbecue for the community on the 26th. It will be on a Sunday. And, you know, everybody is, of course, invited, even th those who are in the diaspora, those who are in the tri-state, and ev anywhere from the diaspora. And my number here that if you want to reach to me is 0742-287-666. Again, 0742-287-666. My name is Mer Moturi, and I'm glad, uh, and I'll have the pleasure of connecting you to, be, uh, to our expo in the first place, and also to show you where else you can be able to invest in the diaspora and the places that you can be able to go to. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mary. We appreciate it. Uh, Thank you so much uh, for having me this morning. Uh -huh. And I'm sure, you know, we are on the right track as Def Kenyans and yeah. investments. And our government is doing so much so that we can be able to have more of the exports uh, mm. instead of the imports. Yeah. And uh, Jumbo List is in a place where we can be able to partner mm -hmm. with all interested uh, people in the government, with the institutions, okay. you know, anybody who Everyone. wants to really get, uh, we can be able to be able to invest, uh, to advise them what to do. All Not right. only in the U.S., but also okay. in Canada, in Mexico, and also as you've got expand. friends. Mm -hmm. 
are in other places that we are reaching out to. Okay, great. Yes. Mm. Thank you very much once again. Uh, this has been Mary Muturi, the CEO of Jumbo, uh, Jumbo List Limited. And I hope you've taken a thing or two about that uh, from this conversation and you've opened your mind to investing. There are a lot of opportunities, uh, you know, um, as a diaspora here in Kenya, and there's a lot we can do as Kenyans uh, because there's a lot of potential in our country. So now you're going to take a short break, and then we'll be back with more tweet comments, and another conversation follows right after that. Stick with us. <laughs>